I'm Wayne Pridgen, and um, let's see, I've been uh, retired for a few years now, five years. I taught uh, in education for 52 years. Um, I had a really good situation in education. Um, I went to uh, Radford uh, High School to teach in 1987, and I retired in uh, 2015, so I taught 27 years there. I coached baseball there and basketball, and um, I started here at Grove. I came in uh, 1973 uh, when it was on uh, Grove Avenue, uh, and I came into uh, Grove uh, Church here. Uh, I've been teaching here for about, uh, well, I started in 83, so I've been teaching here for 37 years. Uh, most of the people here are still here, so I haven't run everybody off. Uh, but the reason I like Grove, and I'll be uh, very honest about it, uh, Sun School class is real special for me. I, I've been with them for about 30 some years, and there's several people in here who've been with me all the time. Uh, and then after uh, Sunday School, I go down to the service and enjoy that. So the reason I have always been at Grove is because I think it's a very cordial place. It's a very nice place. People are very friendly. Um, I think it's a, a really good place to have. My children grew up here um, and crazy about Grove. It's a, it's a good place. It's a welcoming place. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's, you know, talking to Jan a while ago, I don't think, uh, you know, anybody that goes to church doesn't have a special reason to go. I know some people go because of the minister. Some go because of the curtains. Some go because they just enjoy the furniture. Uh, I go here or come here because of the class. It's really special to me and um, I enjoy being with them and uh, I've always uh, felt that, uh, you know, if they got rid of me or they wanted to get rid of me, they could. But uh, Grove's a special, special place and I would encourage anybody who is looking uh, for a church home and would like to find a place where they would be welcome, this would be the place for you. days it shall come to pass, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old shall dream dreams, and your young shall see visions. This is God's word, God's hope. For God's people, let us worship God.
scripture today comes from Ezekiel chapter 37. The Lord's power overcame me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, he led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. He led me through them all around, and I saw that there were a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very dry. He asked me, Human one, can these bones live again? I said, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaimed to these bones, I am about to put breath in you and you will live again. I will put sinews on you, place flesh on you, and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Lord. I prophesied just as I was commanded. There was a great noise as I was prophesying, then a great quaking, and the bones came together bone by bone. When I looked, suddenly there were sinews on them. The flesh appeared, and then they were covered over with skin, but there was still no breath in them. Ezekiel, a prophet of God, whose name means God is strong or God strengthens, born in southern Judah. He was trained to be a priest in Jerusalem when in 597, when he was approximately in his mid-twenties, the Babylonians attacked Jerusalem and took captive 10,000 Jews, Ezekiel, among them. While in captivity in Babylon, Ezekiel hear God's call as a, a prophet to speak God's word to God's people, but it wasn't just a word. You see, God spoke to Ezekiel through visions, and then Ezekiel shared those visions with the Jews who were in captivity. Why did God call Ezekiel to prophesy? Some say it was to help the Jewish exiles living in Babylon to deal with the rea reality of, of where they were, the circumstances in which they found themselves in. That is often true for us today. Sometimes we too have to just recognize that where we are is where we are as we journey through such things as pandemics. Some say that he was called by God to bring hope by focusing on God-sized dreams and positive outcomes, whatever you want more of, they say. That is what you focus on. And if we are focusing on God-sized dreams, then imagine what God can do in and through us. Another says that Ezekiel was called to prophesy by God to God's people in order for those in exile to recognize that their current condition wasn't going to be over in a split second, but they had a journey that they had to go through, that change takes time. Others say that Ezekiel was called to call the people of Babylon to confess their sins and to declare their obedience and their worship to God and their dependence upon God as they leaned into those God-sized dreams. God called Ezekiel to prophesy, to preach, to teach, to speak what God was revealing to him through those visions. In chapter 37, we have perhaps one of the most famous of Ezekiel's visions, the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. Can you imagine yourself 10,000 feet up, looking down on the New River Valley? And in that valley, you see nothing but human skeletons, but not even really skeletons, because in Ezekiel's vision, those dry bones had been laying under the blazing sun of the Middle East, and they were very dry. We can imagine them bleached white, so dry that 
Even the skeleton, all of the muscles, the sinews, everything that held those bones together had been dried away. They were just a pile of bones lying in the valley with no connection. Now from that 10,000 foot view, descend. Descend like Ezekiel did as God said God brought him down into the valley of those bones and he walked among those bones. Talk about a spooky story to be there in a valley of nothing but human bones. He walked that valley, valley of dead, dry bones, and yet, in the middle of that, in the futility of hopelessness, God speaks. And God asks Ezekiel a, a remarkable question, an ultimate question, if you will, human one. Can these bones live again? <laughs> you and I know the answer to that. We've seen that valley of dry bones. They're very dry, and the answer is obviously no. But in the midst of that valley, in the midst of everything that spoke death, Ezekiel turns and says, God, only you know. And in those words, Ezekiel speaks that word of hope, that word of trust in something bigger and greater than human death. And what does God do? Does God raise these bones to life? No, oh no. God does not miraculously cause these bones to live. Instead, he tells the human being, he tells Ezekiel, I am going to call you to action, Ezekiel, and I want you to preach to those that appear dead and dry and have no hope. And the story goes, Ezekiel does preach, and bone comes to bone, and muscles, then flesh, and then we have an entire valley filled with human bodies, all of their parts connected and no life in them. There are stories that come out during this time of year in October, stories that often include zombies. Do you know what a zombie is? Merriam-Webster defines a zombie as a willless and speechless human, held to have died and been supernaturally reanimated. There is even a website called ZombieFandom.com, and they speak of a zombie apocalypse in which there are uh, millions of these zombies that come back to life, a widespread global rise of zombies, as they call them, that are hostile to other human life, and they engage in assault on civilization, bringing death with them. There is no life in the valley of these human bodies lying lifeless there. It would be easy then to see that Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones, if we stop at verse 8, could be considered a zombie apocalypse. But you see, our God does not stop there in this spooky story from the Bible. For in verse 9, we hear God speak to Ezekiel, and again God says, Prophesy, Ezekiel. Prophesy, human one. But this time, God commands that Ezekiel prophesy to the Ruach. In Greek, pneuma. In English, breath. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And then Ezekiel says, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. 
I'm going to invite you to do something now. I want you to take in a deep breath, and I want you to hold it as long as you can. I want you to do another act with me. I want you to exhale as long as you can. What happened? When you inhaled and you held your breath, every single one of us gathered here today, virtually or in person, had to exhale, didn't we? And when we all exhaled, some of us exhaled quicker, some of us exhaled soon, uh, longer, but you reach that point where all of your breath is gone and you cannot do anything but to inhale yet again because you see, to live is to breathe. To breathe is to live. In verse 10, through 14. I prophesied just as God commanded me, Ezekiel said, and the breath entered them and they came to life and they stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. And God said to me, human one, these bones are the entire house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely finished. Have you ever felt completely finished? So now prophesy and say to them, the Lord God proclaims, I'm opening your graves. I will raise you up from your graves, my people, and I will bring you to Israel's fertile land. You will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, my people. I will put my breath in you and you will live. I will plant your feet. Where? Not in the exiles of a foreign land, but on fertile land. And you will know that I am the Lord. I've spoken. I will do it. This is what the Lord says. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The truth is, sometimes the world and circumstances in our lives, we find ourselves like zombies living without breathing. Such was true for these 6th century Jews who were taken from their homeland and living in exile in Babylonian captivity. Life can and sometimes does cause us to feel that, that we have no control. And in those times we feel breathless, powerless, out of control and even dying or living dead like zombies. But what we learn from Ezekiel is that our hope is not in flesh and bone, but our hope is in God, who gives us breath the same way when God created the world and he blew the breath of life into Adam and Adam became a living being. God continues to breathe God's breath upon us. We have our hope who is in a, in a God who is in control. Even when our lives and the things around us and the entire world seems out of control, our God is in control and our God cares for God's people. So breathe in and breathe out and celebrate the Ruach, the breath of God that is alive and moving through you and through me and through the church 
that we, like Ezekiel, might be proclaimers of the God of life in Jesus Christ that brings hope in the valley of dry bones in times in which we need the very presence of our Lord with us. Amen. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer today, I'd like for us to focus on breath. As you breathe in and breathe out during the time of silence of prayer, I invite you to think of those who are in need of God's presence, God's healing presence, uh, the renewal of God's spirit, in their lives, the empowerment of God in their lives, whether that be individual persons or groups or nations. Let us pray. Breathe on us, breath of God. just as you gave Ezekiel a God-sized dream, and then you called him to preach and teach others that they too might experience your life-giving breath. So rekindle your spirit among us and among your church in the world. Breathe, O breath of God, that we might be healed and empowered by your spirit as we go into the world to give witness to your salvation made available to us through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> November 1st is the date that Grove United Methodist Church will be moving to inside worship at 10 a.m. We will continue to have a virtual presence, so we want to say thank you to everyone who is joining us here today. And we will continue to have our drive-in worship services at 9.30 a.m. here at the church for the rest of October. When we think about uh, the different things going on here at Grove, we are a mighty busy church and we hope you will find a place to connect. Perhaps that's one of our small groups. This coming week on Monday at 6.30 p.m., 
a book group will meet by Zoom. On Tuesday, not Wednesday, we're changing the date for this week only, the Short Stories by Jesus group will be meeting here at the church at 5.30 p.m. You can also join us by Zoom for that. On Thursday at 10.30 a.m., our United Methodist women are back in our fellowship hall, and we are really excited to have them back home and in with us. On Friday, 9 a.m., our Gardeners in the Grove. As always, we have Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts, so if you're interested, please call the church office at 639-2807 or check out the various opportunities on our website at groveumcradford.com. Other upcoming dates we need you to mark on your calendar is October 27th, 7 p.m., a Zoom Charge Conference. If you're not familiar with what Charge Conference is, that is an annual meeting of some of the area churches in which we celebrate our ministries together. So please mark your calendars for that. If you would like to join us for that, please, again, contact the church office. We have a Thanksgiving meal every year here at Grove United Methodist. And this year, we are going to offer that Thanksgiving meal. Everything will be curbside pickup. If you would like to donate financially to offset the cost of that meal, please send your donations to Grove UMC, 1020 Tyler Avenue, Radford, Virginia, 24141. And please mark your checks, Thanksgiving dinner. As always, we appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your presence and your tithes and your gifts in support of Grove and our ministries. Know you're always welcome here in the Grove. May God bless you. And as we go out today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace.